Good morning and welcome to Gulfstream today. Brian Natto with you on another beautiful Sunday here in Hollandale Beach. Ten races on tap for you. We've got a firm turf course, a fast main track, the Tapita in play as well. And, of course, the big news on the ten race card, $250,000 in the gross jackpot Rainbow Six. That kicks off in race number five, a quarter of a million dollars. And if you were with us yesterday on the 11 race card, you saw three singles in the finale it never really came close to to fruition but it's still you know out there to be taken you get a price or two and there's some races today that definitely could blow up the board a little bit you've got a shot for a seismic life-changing score 250 in that jackpot will kick it off in race number four uh, in race number five excuse me but Front and center is the early pick five here on the 10 race card. And take a look at my ticket here. And it's a $24 ticket. Pete won't have a lot to do today. Not a lot of scratches uh, on this card. Edwin Gonzalez is going to be off his mounts. We'll get to that as we sift through the 10 race card here. But a $24 ticket uh, for me. The seven and eight are out of race one. So free smoke is out. I had that one. I moved Mr. Rhodium up onto the ticket. In race number two, the order is actually three. Three, two, one. We'll go reverse order there. Tapple Cider on a big drop. The single, the best bet, is in race number three. That is She's the Gift. And then a two-by-two two double to get out of this early sequence. One, seven is the order in race four. Solar Tap on top. And in race five, it's actually 10-9. Reverse order there. Ever Dangerous with a replay coming up for that one, too. So let's get into the opener. It's an interesting race, too. Five furlong, maiden special weight. We are sprinting on a firm turf course here. These are three-year-olds. Todd Pletcher with a couple first-time starters. It'll be interesting to see. I'll get to them in a second. We've got a stat to pull up in a second. But I I'm fading those horses, and I'm... I'm relatively comfortable doing that. Again, the seven and the eight are out here in race number one. Side eye for me, for Mike Maker. We saw him win a race yesterday. This is the first time in the barn here. Second time Lasix. The odds now are going to be a little out of whack with the two scratches, especially of the eight free smoke. But, you know, side eye is interesting to me. He got to the turf last time. He added blinkers last time, too. Got run off his feet a little bit by a good winner, but I think he's going to be closer today. I always did have this horse on on top, uh, I, I will note my top three stay the same. I did have free smoke in the fourth spot, but side eye to me with the tightener behind him. Now going to Mike Maker, got the turf run. Second time blinkers is an angle I like a lot too. Side eye for me in the opener. Very early money on the five. Continue a pace. So I got to be honest with you. I played him last time and he wasn't very good and he, he didn't do a lot of running. But there were things to think that now he can be better today. It was his first start in the U.S. It was his first start off an elongated layoff. It was his first start for Safi Joseph Jr. So we're going to come back today. He's going to throw a lot at him. Two turns on the Tapita last time. Turf sprinting today. We'll see what we get. I do feel like he's going to run better now that he's got a little bit more acclimated. Acclimated to a lot of different things, actually. Safi now the United States, you know, the, the, the training program and all of that. So we'll see what we get today. I am expecting better down inside. Jetta Ross, uh, Terry Pompey, the uh, one won the other day. And I think Jetta Ross is going to be your inside speed. Chantel, excuse me, Chantel Sutherland uh, is going to go here early on. And she's got some speed to work with as well. Chantel's been riding in very, very good form here at the Royal Palm Meet. The rail is not ideal. But you can see this horse really flew early, dueled throughout, and I thought held relatively well, all things considered, when you're going 44 and change on debut and to be third, just beating less than two lengths. It was a good effort. So, Pletcher's got the two, and he's got the four. Let's bring up the stack, guys, and I'll talk over it a little bit uh, with these horses. They're both first-time starters. How about this? Two for 26, 8% turf sprints at Gulfstream, maiden special weight first-time starters the past five years. These horses, I, I would definitely tab the tote board on these horses. Now, it's very, very early in the betting. Neither of them is taking any money. Six to one and um, six to one and five to one on the morning line. I think those are good numbers because, you know, you tread a little lightly with that, these kinds of horses. Both of these horses have pedigrees, at least on the bottom. Now, the two twirling express is out of an fleet Alex Mayer that was a half to Ruth Ariane, a grade one winner for Christoph Clamont. She won on debut, but the, 
this is the fifth fold. The other four were not much. One of them did win on debut. See what we get from Twirling Express. In the four south side, a Coolmore horse here. Very, very interesting. Fourth fold out of the dam. None of them really could run. None of them won on debut. The dam was 0 for 2 herself. She's a half to Giants Causeway and a half to Freud. Now, Freud wasn't much of a runner. He's been a prolific sire in New York. And Giants Causeway, we know how great he was for, for Coolmore and, and Aiden O'Brien coming up just a little bit shy to Tis now in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And I think he won five group ones in a row, of course, on the turf leading into that race. So, And he's been a, is a huge sire. But, again, south side, they did pay half a million dollars for him. We'll see what we get. A son of Curlin out of a guy. Galileo Mare, five furlong is going to be awfully sharp for this horse here on debut. Again, tab the tote board here. I'm okay letting both the Pletchers beat me. On to race two. We'll kick off the early pick four here. And uh, we're routing on the Tapita. Three-year-old fillies or four-year-olds and up, which have never won two. The tag is eight at a mile and 70. Samantha's not going to be with us today, but she has a ticket here. We will take a look at it. Just a $9 ticket. I like these short, condensed tickets here. And uh, singling here with Holy Berries. I've got that one in second. Certainly a major, major player. And then a three by two by three interior um, pick three to get out of the sequence. She's got my top pick and my best bet of the day. She's a gift in race three. One five for her in race four. I do have Solar Tap the one on top. And then she goes a little, that's a little outside the box, I think, in race number five. Two, four, nine for her. We do match with the nine Kineos in that one. A $9 ticket for Samantha. So let's get to this race here. Uh, I, I've got the three Tapple Cider on top, and, and you just really can't, uh, you can't get by the class drop. The last time this horse was on Tapita was in for 50. Now we're in for eight today, just ran for 20 on the turf, didn't do any running. We've got a trainer switch to Mike Lerman today, but the Tapita run two back, and if this horse has any sort of the form, you know, that, that, that he had in that spot that he'd been showing earlier in his career. He's going to beat this field, and he's going to beat this field comfortably. But the big question is, does he still have it? He's probably going to be an underlaid price. He's 5-2 to two on the morning line. That makes a lot of sense. He might even be lower than that, but uh, didn't do any running on the turf last time. And you see his form when he was with Barkley Tag. He's got decent turf races. So this is a real conundrum today. What do you get from Tapple Cider? I'm willing to think he's got enough in the tank to beat this uh, this modest group. Let's just let's just be honest. This is a modest group here. Holy Berry's on top for Samantha and certainly an A type of horse for me, a daughter of Holy Boss. Uh, Going to get the weight allowance for Claudio Gonzalez. He's one of those trainers that we kind of feel like is really going to get going here at the Royal Palm Meet, but it's been a little while now. Claudio has struggled uh, for, for the better part of a few months. I know it was in the teeth of the championship meet, but we'll see what we get today. Major, major player that was a good, solid second last time. Did give up an open length late lead, but uh, that was a pretty good effort last time by Holy Berries, and then certainly down inside Shea D. Secret. Now, this is a tricky read here because you look at the form of, of, of this daughter of Nyquist, and you see the races she's coming out of, and you say, wow, this is a huge class drop for her. Well, I'll go a little slower on that because this is a three-year-old, and those races were those were all restricted three-year-old races. So she's in against open waters here today. She's taken on some older four- and five-year-old fillies in here and mares. So this is not the class drop it might look on paper, and, and that's why I think she is a two-time winner. That's a big deal, and, and Ron and I have talked about that quite a bit. But um, this is a tougher group than she's facing now that she's integrating with older horses. I'm going to use her, but uh, she's a little bit further down in my mix. Race number three here, seven furlongs on a fast main track. Three-year-old fillies or four-year-olds and up, which have never won two. The tag, 62.50. And again, we're starting to integrate. You've seen it now for two or three weeks. The three-year-olds are now meshing with the older horses. And when you're talking about April 23rd, it's, it's a it's a negative. It, it really is that, you know, they're spotting a lot of maturity and experience to some older rivals. So while they get in with a weight allowance and they do get in with the fact that you can be a two time winner in, or, you know, a three time winner, we just saw it in the last race with shady secret. So they get that angle going. 
But, you know, they've got that maturity to, uh, factor to go with it. Once we start getting into June, I don't think it's an issue at all. But, you know, early season, I do think it's a definite factor. This is going to bring my best bet of the day. She's a gift. It'll be our first replay as well. Let's cue it up, guys, and I'll talk about it. Because she ran very, very well. The four, the journey girl, is out of this race, too. And that is hugely important for She's a Gift. You see her down on the inside, doling out the splits with Provocativa. Never gave her a breather in this spot. And Pradaka Tiva, who's chasing in the two path, she's going to end up being fifth, okay? So she's a gift, completely fries her. She opens up in mid-stretch and I, you know, she was two to one. I get it. But look at this now. She's basically, Provocativa is going to basically get abreast of her. You could argue maybe she even stuck a nose in front. She's a gift, re-rallies and takes it back from her. Ends up kicking clear by about two lengths in mid-stretch. She's going to get run down by Disco Queen. You can see her ranging up on the outside. Garden Trip stalking in this spot. And she got all the spoils here uh, of, of the duel that she's a gift had to go through. But she didn't want to give it up. I'll give her credit. I Yeah, right. She's one for 19. You want to fight me on that? I, that? That's a problem. I understand that. Seven underneath finishes. And that's not ideal. This is not typically my kind of horse. That was a big effort, and you see it there in front of you. I'm not going to hold it against her for giving up that length late lead when you saw how hard she had to work to get it. Now, with the, especially with the Scott, she was always my best bet, but I really feel like she amps up a little bit now because D Journey Girl, who was a real long shot in here, but she had early speed, and, and uh, she's out of here, so I think, She's a gift. Look, lo looks loose and controlling to me. My best bet of the day. Take note. I mentioned Edwin Gonzalez is off his mounts today, and Pete will guide you through the card in a little bit. But Paco Lopez is going to ride the two tested positive with Edwin, Edward, uh, Edwin Gonzalez off his mount. South Pacific underneath for me. Um, one for 16. That, the other reason why I'm not too hard on She's a Gift in here when at normally one for 19, I wouldn't like that. You got all of them in here. Nine, one for 19. One for 16, one for 17, 15, and on down the line. This is a 2L with a lot of one firsts, so I won't hold it against her. South Pacific is eligible to trip out here. She might like to stretch out a little bit. She should be close early on. You know, if they want to be aggressive with her, if Sonny Leon wants to be aggressive, he could see her on the lead. But regardless, I think uh, She's a Gift is in a really, really good spot in here. Twirling Grace, if it falls apart, maybe... Um, Maybe she she wakes up. I, I I don't know. She was six to five last time for twelve five. Didn't do any running at all. Ronaldo Richards has been quiet, and uh, if she runs back to her best races, I got no problem with her at all. But they're probably going to bet her a little bit today. Um, I, I, she's impossible to trust for me on another very precipitous drop in a race where with no excuse whatsoever. It was a stalker's race, too, and, and she didn't run at all. I, I would think she's a gift is going to be favored in here. I would not want to take a short number on Twirling Grace. Let's bring us to race four before we take a break and get to the rainbow. Race four here is routing again on the Tapita at a mile and a 16. Three-year-olds or four-year-olds and up, which have never won two. Our tag is eight in here. We got another replay to show of the seven. Seabaray, who did well to draw outside some of these. This is the race um, last time. I know it's on the turf, but this horse really gets whacked out at the start here. You can see it there on the head-on. Thanks, Bob. Good job. And then we'll show you the pan as well, and you can see it. Not only can you see the whack, but you're going to see where this horse is now. He doesn't want to be last, and you can see his races prior to that on the tapita and even on the turf. He's a little closer on. He's down inside here. He's actually going to try to get a little bit rank entering the first turn. He's going to run up in a little bit of a spot. And uh, he's just in tight quarters. He doesn't do a lot of running from there on. I don't think he's a turf horse. I think he's a, probably a little bit better on the Tapita. And I'm willing to really forgive that race. He's got a nice post today in this spot a, as well. And with a little bit more of an alert beginning, I think he's going to be closer early on. He should be a square price as well. This is kind of... To me, a bit of a spread race. It's a little bit of a tricky race as well. But that's Seabaray. But Solar Tap is on top for me. Um, uh, you know, you look at the race last time for 12-5. He didn't do a lot of running. But the race I want to focus on is two back when he really ran well. He was two lengths clear in deep stretch. He gave it up. Okay, it's not ideal. But again, another one of these spots where we're talking about a lot of horses. 21, 27, 17. A lot of one in here. He is one of them, but 
I thought that race two back was really, really good. The winner comes back to win again. Solar Tap had a little bit of a trip. And I think conversely, on the rise last time, not only did he, he's not that kind of horse, he's not a 12-5 horse, I think he probably regressed a little bit off such a good run two back, too. You look at his form, and certainly uh, in his starts for Jose Rojas on the Tapita, they've, they've been very, very sharp efforts. And, you know, a lot of his losses and a lot of his, his no-shows were... Uh, for a different barn, he was 74 to 1, 2 back. You're going to get a lot shorter than that today. But I, I think you can start believing that those two races are, are pretty good and you can take them at face value. I like him in here. Listen, Bach's going to get a piece of this. Bach always gets a piece of this. Bach's one for 27 with five underneath finishes. You just can't put a horse like that on top because he's time and time again, he's a horse you're going to talk about. Look at him. He's got proven form. He could win this. Absolutely, he could win this. But he never delivers in the stretch and he always he seems to get a slice, find one, two, or three better. So I'm I'm quite willing to fade him at, at one for 27. So we'll go one seven here in my early pick five. So he got 10. That means four down, six to go. Rainbow six with a quarter of a million dollars coming up in race five. Rainbow Six time here in the fifth. And, boy, you want to start a Rainbow Six with a tricky one. We're on the turf here, routing at a mile and a 16th. $35,000 claimers, three-year-olds or four and up, which have never won three or uh, a race since October 23rd. That six-month mark and tricky, tricky stuff because I think the two favorites and the two horses to beat are on the outside, too. We'll take a look at my ticket, $38.40, a quarter of a million dollars in this. I'm going to take the two favorites. I'm going to show you a replay in a second. I'm okay with them. I think at the end of the day, they're the best horse uh, that's ever dangerous in Kenyos, uh, and we're going to go with it. And, you know, if you're looking to try to sweep this thing, this might be the race that blows it up. I'm going to chalk out a little bit in race number six. We'll go four deep. Mighty Jin Jin, a couple of Cassie class drives. Droppers in here. Mighty Jinjin on top. A replay coming up. Here's your single in race seven. Valiant Avenger is a short place on the line, as he should be, because he's in a very, very good form for Ralph Nix. We'll give you a little window dressing on the replay with him. 31 in race eight. Your inheritance for Claudio Gonzalez. A big scratch of American, of course, in there. Here's your spread in race nine. My long shot is abuse of power. Pay attention to Anna Feely. I got a feeling this horse is going to be very, very live for Amador Sanchez. Uh, definitely using him. And then three deep in the finale. The top pick is Witching Hour. Kevin Krigger is going to ride that again. Edwin Gonzalez off his mounts. Pete's upstairs. He's going to be with you in a second. Scratches and changes and all that good stuff. But let's get to the fifth here. And as I mentioned, it's a really good race. We're going to queue up the replay of Ever Dangerous. He's on the outside today. He was on the outside. This is the marathon, okay? Two back on the turf. I want to give you your finishing order. He's the nine. Thank you, Bob. I want to give you your finishing order. 10-8-1. And he runs fourth in this spot. You can see him going up here, making first run into a pace that's going to fall apart. 10 8 one, nine is your order. And he did very, very well to hang on here because Henley Joy was sitting the trip. Marwad, who's very, very good for Muhammad Mubarak, is going to loop them all. This is a graded stakes caliber horse, Marwad. And Ever Dangerous just gives it up a little bit late. He probably doesn't want to go a mile and three ace either. He's probably much more likely to trip to run better at a mile and a 16th. I thought that was a very, very good effort. Now, five for, excuse me, he did 
didn't do a lot of running last time on the Tapita. Kind of just ran around in place. He's a better turf horse. The, the, the post is not ideal, but it's not like we're going a mile where you can really have to go. And don't forget, the rails are at 35 feet. We were 70 earlier in the week. The rails are at 35 feet. So I think Ever Dangerous is going to be okay in here. Kenya's certainly the main danger for Mike Maker. We saw him win a race on the turf yesterday, favored on the morning line. The last time he was on the turf, he was just in against a month better than he's in here. And I, I have no problem with thinking he's the horse to beat. Those are the two I landed on. Van Dusen down inside is okay for Fernando Abreu. He's going to have to he's going to have to get to the level of the two morning line favorites and the two horses to beat. But with that being said, he's on the inside and he's got a little upside second time in the barn. And the two favorites are on the outside. So he's eligible to trip out a little bit better. Maybe that helps him bridge the gap. He's a nice price and he'll get you'll get some value. He's the type of horse that blows things up right away in the rainbow. Race number five here. We are sprinting on the Tapita, a snappy five and a half in his $25,000 maiden claimer for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. Samantha's got a ticket. We'll take a look at that right now. And then we've got a couple of repl replay to show. $36 for her. She's got the main contender. She's got my single as well, Valiant Avenger. And then a three by two by four, a little more spready in the last race for her on a $36 ticket. So let's get to race six here. We're going to show you the replay of Mighty Jin Jin and Forever Uncaptured. Um, Forever Uncaptured is going to beat Mighty Jin Jin pretty comfortably. It was Mighty Jin Jin's debut, the Live Oak Homebred and Forever Captured. Forever Captured's the eight. Mighty Jin Jin is the 13. And Mighty Jin Jin is just going up there. Meet Me at the Beach was good, okay? She ends up winning, and she ends up frying everybody that was involved with her early on. But, you know, Mighty Jin Jin from a wide draw didn't take any money, completely dead on the board. This is for 50, by the way. And she's just kind of going to get swatted, as everybody else is, by Meet Me at the Beach, who ran so good in here. Finished the, the horses that were that were 1, 2, 3 at the finish line were 1, 7, 4 early so obviously she wires and then it fries apart a little bit forever uncaptured is the eight and i think she benefited from what mighty Jin, Jin was doing early on and that was kind of getting fried up there and chasing the heavy favorite now the drop we're dropping from 50 to a quarter it's a pretty sizable one mighty Jin has got the race behind her to move forward from she's well drawn you could see her she was out in the parking lot on debut i think she runs a lot better in here i think that's the race too that i want some of these horses coming out of i've got forever uncaptured in second me corazon is the other cassie i've got her in third she was in for 50 on debut she was 30 to one that day didn't take any money we'll see what we get on the drop that was a two-turn route on the turf that's tough on a young horse debuting so i'm willing to give forgive her a little bit this is a tough tricky spread kind of race i'm going to do it in my rainbow in race number six late pick four kicking off in race number seven we can bring my ticket up just real quickly it's essentially it's going to mirror my rainbow six twelve dollars the single is valiant avenger and then a two by four by three ticket as i'll get to it and we'll talk about it uh, throughout let's bring up the replay of valiant avenger as i mentioned just some window dressing here nine to five on the morning line a deserved strong favorite in here you can see him four wide here on the back stretch routing on the tapita that was the last start he's been freshened a little bit by ralph nix i like that because this was a strong fast effort in here and uh, he's going to loop on the outside and he's going to win comfortably now regal speaker is six to five in this spot and um he didn't really fire and, and i thought you know look at we're about five wide here six wide seven wide now for uh for D uh, valiant avenger and i thought this was a pretty good effort when he uh levels off through mid stretch here and as you see my man flint goes right on past him but no 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 he digs in here he drifts a little bit he's gonna end up win going away really strong effort i like what ralph's done here he freshens him up a little bit brings him right back he's not in for a tag it's a confident move he's right back here and he's let's just be honest he's catching a group he's, he's supposed to be in here merlin is back for arendelle the homebred boy their two-year-old was good the other day winning but merlin uh, is one for 15 with six seconds so i think he's the main danger to valiant avenger i don't know if he's a win threat with that kind of record not to mention he's off a of september lay early september layoff as well so we'll just that's a punch exacta to me that is eight two right to the hoop in there late pick three time 
in race number eight, the last of our replays to show. We're seven furlongs in this starter optional claimer, and the gang's all here kind of thing. We do scratch the four and the six, so actually American, of course, is out of this. But we can still show the replay because it's going to bring together Dem, your, Dem a wonder and your inheritance. American, of course, is the four. Dem is the three. Your inheritance is the second. The scratch is huge in here for Dem a wonder, but this is just a race here. I, you know, I thought it was a pretty good effort by everybody. My destiny is going to end up winning this race by three lengths. He's the one kind of garden trip stalking while Demo Wonder in American, of course, or I don't want to say they're going at it early on, but you know, they're setting an honest, lively pace in here and Dem and Dem, uh, and excuse me, my destiny kind of gets rewarded for being able to stalk. Your inheritance comes out of it a little bit late. He was kind of under the hard chase and I'm not sure that's what he wants to do. He got run off his feet a bit too. And I, I think today now, especially with the scratch of American, of course, no decaf is out of this race a, a, as well. I think with the scratch now, it certainly does help Demo Wonder. The issue with me is, is twofold. He's down inside do a lot of running that day don't forget he was uh, he was eight to five in that spot and he was in pretty good form coming off a monster win maybe he bounced maybe he regressed but the more you look at his form the more you wonder if the win two back it was at seven furlongs i don't know if that's more the exception than the rule and what do we get today with him down inside he's going to be an underlaid price especially with the scratch of american of course no decaf again is out as well i, I am always i always had your inheritance on top i'm hoping he can turn the tables in here second off the claim for claudio gonzalez we have seen this move pay uh, in the past where claudio gets this horse in the barn now he is so good First off the claim, he can pop second off too. I don't think it was as bad as maybe on paper as it looks. He was flat that day. I also think he's going to be a little closer early on today, stretching to seven without the speed of American, of course. So I'm going to go for a little bit of an upset with your inheritance. Demo Wonder, you, you got to respect him. You got to respect Rohan Crichton in the job he does, but just maybe tread a little lightly. I, I got a feeling he's a lot of people might view him, especially with the scratch, might view view him as a bit of a free square battle cry i'll mention him i don't know what to make of him he was he was 70 cents on the dollar last time and he was awful he's not in for a tag that's the positive i talked about victor barboza he's going to get going here that's a positive too second off the layoff as well but i don't know i i, I can't endorse him after seeing that last race so here's your feature in the ninth and this is a really Really good one. Time to talk about this race. Optional claimer on the turf. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. We go a mile in here. This is my long shot play of the day. Abuse of power. I, I, I think I'll get a square, very square price in here. The races that I want to look at is two back. She was really, really good on the turf. Losing to Midnight Bella, who came back to win. Five furlongs on the turf last time from a wide draw. That's not her game whatsoever. But now we're down inside. We can save all the ground in here, and I think that's important, too, because this is a post-position race. At a mile with the rails out at 35 feet, you better be inside or you better catch a good start because you're going to run really quickly into the first turn, and you run the risk of being very, very wide as well. Abuse of power on top for me. The horse that's... Uh, Definitely the wild card, and uh, Pete and I were joking earlier on. Uh, Anna Feely is 20 on the morning line. I, I'm i pretty confident they're going to bet this horse today. This is Amador Sanchez. We've got the stat here. Let's bring it up for Amador Sanchez. It's not a big one. I'm going to talk other stats too, but this isn't really the one you can see. This is first off a trainer switch turf routes at Gulfstream the past five years, 21%. We know this barn. This is a really good, solid barn. He's done good work with these imports. This is a, a Peru bread, okay, that has group form over there, second in a group three. I, I understand there's not a lot over there, okay? We, we know that this is not the big leagues she's coming in here but he has pulled this move in the past many many times we're going to add lasix four for 13 adding lasix trainer switch in all told 26 percent from a good sample first in north america three for eight i i, I feel pretty strongly they're going to bet this horse today 
I, maybe I'm wrong. It wouldn't shock me if she's sitting up there at three to one because this is a race. Okay, there's some okay horses in here. This is also a race that it, it, it's tough to trust. You got Towser next door for Safi. She's okay, but she's no great shakes either. And and you know she's uh, Towser is in here at. Uh, seven to two on the morning line and that's fine I, th I think she probably will end up going off favored in here but my point is that she she's not that much better than anybody you want to come up with here and if Anna Philly can run a little bit we've got Lionel Reyes so he reaches out for a name jockey I think this horse is live in here it'll be interesting to see what we get this is a definite tab the tote board race uh, on this one you know there's others you can go in here but I like being inside too it's not a coincidence that my top three in this spot are all inside in what could be a post-position race. Mandy Green's got good form off the claim for Edgar Baia. Boy, that post is a tricky one for a barn that's 33% off the claim. Let's get to the finale. We're routing on the tapita here in this $16,000 maiden claimer. We're going a mile in 70. Really tricky race. I'm going to go to the four witching hour who's going to pick up Kevin Krigger. Again, Edwin Gonzalez is off his mouth. So we hope to see him back here Thursday. Pete will have the changes. Witching hour. We go second off a layoff. Was in for a quarter off the layoff last time. Drops a little bit. Broke from the rail last time. We get off there. I thought the effort was okay, and that was on the turf. Uh, we're going to stretch out here. It's not routed on the Tapita, so that could be a positive. Armonia to the outside on a stiff, stiff drop. Um, what are you getting today? Maiden special weight two back. 50 maiden claimer last time. 16 today. Maybe that's just where she's supposed to be. It'll be interesting. Beauty Destiny is down inside on the stretch. Second time for Anna Mia, dropping, stretching. There's reason to think she wakes up a little bit too. Boy, it's a tricky finale. It's a tricky late double. I'm going to tell you what, this is a tricky rainbow as well. It wouldn't shock me at all if, like we had yesterday, three live sweepers. Wouldn't shock me at all if we get to about 518 in the p.m. and there's some singles in there as well. So that's 10 to wrap up the four-day race week. But let's take a quick look at the lightning round here before we get to it. We ran that overnight handicap yesterday. It was a good stakes. Certainly Choose Joy was the one to beat, but she could not get the candy in here because this was a very, very impressive wire job. You don't get Mike Maker on the turf, especially in a stakes at 16 to 1 very often. Choose Joy at odds on had every chance to run by get the candy and she could not do it and look at her pulling away late a very very impressive big effort choose joy has never been out of the exacta and eight starts on the turf at gulfstream park so if you're beating her you're doing really really good work impressive job there by get the candy good job by mike maker his assistant travis and all the team there best bet today for me and i doubled up yesterday best bet long shot i'll try to do it again today in race number three she's a gift for me on top. Do we have uh, Samantha's best bet? Yeah, there we go. Holy berries. Okay. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. And my long shot today is in that, whoa, that tricky turf race in race nine. Abuse of power down to the inside. The one horse. We should get six to one. Maybe even we get a little drift there. And uh, Samantha's is Anna Feely. We talked about that one yesterday. And she's out there uh, on Twitter. You can uh, see her reason why. The champ, that's Forte. Not only our champ, the Curlin Florida Derby champ, but of course the two-year-old champ as well. He put in a work at Churchill Downs. We'll have one more before the Derby. My buddy Kevin Kirstein, I appreciate you. Let me uh, grab this video from you, Mr. Do Everything up there in Kentucky. That's Forte on the outside. And uh, working with Bright Future, who's a good workhorse too. So it's a pretty solid effort. You can see an aggressive gallop out here as well. And uh, the champion, boy, was he was an Odd run by him in the Florida Derby, but when it was all said and done, he was really good, and he ended up winning with ease. Clearly, to me, the horse to beat in the run for the Roses, 13 days and counting. Samantha and I are going to talk a lot about our horses over the next uh, few weeks because we've got several championship meet horses front and center uh, in the Kentucky Derby. And then speaking of the Derby, you can watch it right here at 10 Palms. Get on the website. Get some tickets for this spot here. They're going to go quick. You can see the deal there. Reserve your table. It's always a fun day here at Gulfstream Park on Kentucky Derby Day. Really looking forward to that. The Curlin Florida Derby has produced a few winners in the past several years. Always Dreaming uh, is one of them. And, boy, oh, boy, I'll tell you what. Mage and, and Forte are going to be uh, – 
They're going to be in there, and they're going to know they're in there next, in a couple Saturdays. So that's it. Ten races today. I'll be here. Claudia's going to join me for a few as well. Pete's got you covered upstairs with the scratches and the changes. 